Hello everyone and welcome. Make a cup of your favorite drink and get comfortable because this is a wonderful time for new stories from Yellow Cat. Send your own stories in the comments below and maybe they'll be in our new video. Subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed yet and let's get started. Reddit. Have you ever fired someone and had them go completely crazy? Part 6. I used to provide independent consulting services years ago. After firing the network slash IT guy, they brought me in to change passwords, break into things, and then list all the security flaws. Since shipping parts was a significant portion of their business, they maintained large warehouses equipped with robotic shelves and pickers who would gather items for each order. The entire system was powered by a beige 10-year-old computer running software from an old defunct company. This guy runs through a loading dock over to this PC, rips it off the table it was on, and slams it into the floor while I'm sitting there working. Subsequently, he begins sprinting throughout the warehouse, pulling cables from any available source. It was, of course, the man was let go. When police arrive, he leaves in handcuffs. That old PC actually came back to life thanks to my efforts. Even with all the dents, it continued to operate. Had to replace a few cables that he pulled on, cutting them on the desk's sharp edge. I have a fascinating story about my termination. Nobody going crazy out, but I feel like this belongs in this thread somehow. It was a real yuppie place, but I used to work at this really nice upscale health food grocery. I was in charge of organizing the shelves and breaking down orders in the dairy slash frozen cooler. I didn't plan to stay in this real BS job for very long. Therefore, the management had a bad reputation for being jerks to workers, making up excuses to fire them when they began to request raises. It made sense, I suppose, since they could simply hire new employees at a cheaper wage to perform the same mindless garbage. I had requested a reduction in hours so that I could work part-time and attend classes full-time because I was going to start graduate school. Yeah, sure, that'll work, or something similar was said by my manager. Okay, cool, I replied, and took the well-earned paid vacation. My manager calls me when I get back from vacation to say, hey, we have an extra shift for you today if you want it. After your vacation, I thought you might want to pick up some extra cash. With a sure, I'll work it, I walked in. But the manager told me we had to go up to the HR lady's office when I arrived. At that point, I realize I'm going to be fired, so I say, okay, let's get this done. When we get up there, my manager begins telling me things like, this isn't working out, I can't have fewer hours, they're firing me, and so on. I say something like, it's okay, everyone knows I wasn't going to want this job for very long, but this isn't the appropriate course of action. You don't make up an excuse to say you have a spare shift for someone, and then fire them when they report for duty. You're wasting my time, and I have other things to do. At this point, the fake, universally hated HR woman begins lecturing me about how my attitude isn't professional enough, how I haven't been working hard enough lately, and how I don't stay on task enough. Seems you need a really professional attitude for hefting boxes in a freezer and stacking effing yogurt on shelves for chump change. This is where things really start to get exciting because I detest this bee and I know that she's been having an affair with one of my friends who works there. She used to sleep with one of my friends who works there too, as far as I know. It's kind of like this thing that everyone knows about, but no one talks about because these guys couldn't keep it a secret. Excuse me, are you lecturing me about professionalism after you've already fired me? I interrupt her in the middle of her statement since I refuse to listen to it. I could bring up some other things that another person in this office has done that are really unprofessional, I say, fixing her with my full attention, but I'm going to take the high road and just head home and apply for unemployment. You okay with that? Yeah, that's fine, the HR lady says in a quiet voice. Sorry, but I have to escort you out. Store policy, the manager says. Whatever, it's fine, I say. She's crying, she says, thanking me for not bringing up the specifics of the HR lady's transgressions, and we're on our way out. I advise you to leave it alone, have no ill will, and go home. After I get home, I get a call from the HR woman. She asks if I have anything I need to get off my chest, if there's anything we should talk about. 
I replied, I don't know why you're calling me. I don't work there anymore. You still do. You live your life, I live mine. That's it. I was baffled as to why she had called. I've applied for unemployment benefits, but I'm not holding my breath too long because I know that HR lady will stop at nothing to deny anyone benefits. After all, even though it was all nonsense, I got fired. For some reason, the HR representative never answers the adjudicator's calls and never makes the store's case. I receive unemployment benefits. I fill my girlfriend in on everything, including the heated conversation that took place in the HR lady's office. You kind of blackmailed her, GF remarks. She didn't argue with you about unemployment because of this. I didn't blackmail her, I declare. I just wanted to silence her because I was angry. Her response is, yeah, well, she thinks you blackmailed her. Furthermore, what do you know, I concur. She has battled tirelessly to prevent any of my friends from receiving unemployment benefits, despite the fact that several of them have been fired from the same company for similarly ridiculous reasons. I was able to get unemployment benefits, which was very helpful while I was attending graduate school. I love my job now, and I occasionally run into the HR lady in the community. We merely make incredibly fake hello sounds or gaze at each other silently. I triumph. Defensive edit. It appears that some individuals believe my unemployment benefits were unauthorized or that my unemployment was the result of the HR representative's fear of confrontation. The truth is that I was offered an extra shift after being told I could go from a full-time to a part-time job, but this was all a ruse to get me into the building so I could be fired for questionable reasons. I'll never know, but I doubt I would have received unemployment benefits otherwise. I worked as a pizza place manager when I was 19. We had a cook who embodied the stereotypical 16-year-old white kid who wants to be a gangster. He detested me and had a terrible attitude since I wouldn't allow him to treat his shift like an endless smoke break. One day I went into the kitchen to tell him for the tenth time that it was improper for him to simply stroll outside to smoke when he had tickets to make. I know, shut up B is his reply. He responded to my advice to watch his language with another shut up B. I warned him that he would be fired if he said anything more. Shut up B. Go, you're fired, I yelled. He threw the pizza he was making at me, blew up against the wall, and missed me. He walked out of the restaurant with a stomp, upending objects. In an attempt to make sure he hadn't damaged my car, I followed him outside into the parking lot. He went to his car, came out with a wooden gardening tool handle that was three and a half feet long, and he swung it horizontally towards my head. After dodging the first blow, I used my right hand to seize his weapon with my left and pushed him to the ground with my right. I yelled at him to get the F out and threatened to call the police if I saw him again. He jumped in his car and peeled out of the parking lot, narrowly missing a family crossing the street from Burger King. As if that wasn't enough, about 30 minutes later, he called the restaurant and begged me not to fire him, literally sobbing. I told him, laughing, that he was even more foolish than I had assumed to have called. Resuming his tough guy persona, he uttered, Well, you at least have to give me my stick back. I hung up on him after laughing once more. Never saw him in the future. What is the silliest or most crazy thing your HOA board or neighbors have ever done? Part 6. My HOA forgot to add most of the lots to the covenants. <laughs> the development of my neighborhood began in 2008 and the original covenants were written by the developer. They made it clear that they only applied to phase one, which was the only phase that was built at the time. With the help of a new developer, the covenants were changed in 2012 to include phase two. Building has been going on and phases nine and 10 are in the middle of building right now. The problem is that the developer never made any changes to include any other stages as the building went on. The developer still had full control and charges $240 a year for each lot. The only cost is an absurd $35k a year for lawn care, which includes cutting back the grass around the entrance and around two retention ponds every year. Oh, and they also got $6,000 for HOA management fees, which they paid to the developer. In spite of the covenants, they've never been enforced and the grass is never mowed. We just moved in, and when I saw that we weren't in the covenants, I told them to go F themselves when they came to get the fee. Felt great. Anyway, F that developer, F HOA, and F their stupidity. Edit. 
Here's an update for those who were left wondering. There are lawyers involved, and they've looked over everything. There's no need for them to agree with the covenants because we're free and clear. Only bad thing is that it wouldn't be worth it to go after each case separately. HOA dues are only $240 a year versus $7,500 in legal fees. The good news is that the covenants only affect 18% of the lots in our 278 lot neighborhood. That's it. Class action. I'm on the HOA board for a small condo complex, and I'll tell you some crazy stories from the other side. Each unit has its own covered parking space, but someone kept parking in the space of another owner because it was closer to his unit. After a while of calling and knocking on his door, we gave up and started towing his car before he learned. A huge drone with wings that were six feet across fell on one of our units. The owner called and said the roof was leaking. When our maintenance guy went up to check, he saw that a huge drone had fallen from the sky and hit his roof. Finally, it cost 40 k to fix, and we never found out who owned the drone. Someone who was drunk chose to jump the fence to get to the pool instead of walking around the gate. The fence had one of those old styles where the tops are sharp. He slipped and hurt himself on the fence, and the president of the board had to cut him down. A while ago, we painted the whole neighborhood and got a group of volunteers to help us pick out the new color scheme. A three-color scheme was chosen after two months of thought, argument, and paint samples. The first problem we had was that one of the colors wasn't dark enough to cover the dark paint that was already there with just one coat. Extra coats of paint would have cost 30 to 40 k more, so the board decided to change the color from light to dark. One of the committee volunteers threw a fit and told us to scrap the whole project so she could come up with a new color scheme. This happened after the contract had been signed and the special assessment dues had been paid. We had to tell her to F off in a nice but firm way. For some reason, that same woman had roach problems and thought the roaches were getting in through the cracks in her walls. So she would stop complaining. The maintenance guy went outside with a caulk gun and filled in some spots on the outside of her unit. Doesn't do anything useful and looks bad, but it kept her quiet. An owner who lived in the back of the neighborhood put in a palm tree a while ago. He planted it too close to his fence, which was a problem. The tree and its roots tore down his fence. We didn't notice until the tree trimming crew came by once a year. He was mad that fixing the fence cost a few thousand dollars. On a tiny exclusive lake I call home. A few years ago, we expanded our deck and installed a hot tub there as well. We don't have a permit. Our naughty neighbors across the house informed the village when they called. In any case, following numerous public hearings, she declared that having a hot tub on our deck constituted a liability. We reside on a 65-foot deep lake that is 11 acres in size, and you're worried about our hot tub on our land? This woman is completely insane. She informed my parents that she had cameras and listening devices watching our land. She also hired a surveyor to determine the exact location of her lot line, took a rope down, chopped all of our trees and other things that overhung her property. Our tree was lopped off. She really chopped it in half. We displayed it as a component of our war badge. She's also reported us to the police for throwing wild parties. They're just my girlfriend and I in a hot tub by ourselves, and she said there were more than 40 people on our deck. These aren't wild parties, though. My HOA isn't too bad, but there is one person who hates everything about it. It's unfortunate that he served as a resident and on-site manager for a period of time, in addition to serving on the board after he had finished making mistakes in his role as an on-site manager. My wife and I had installed a storm door, and he had a problem with their installation. The shade of off-white that was used was incorrect. I received a letter from them in which they explained the issue and informed me that I was to attend a meeting with the board to discuss the matter and find out what I could do to resolve the issue. I accessed the internet, downloaded copies of the laws that govern HOAs in my state, and highlighted the sections that were most pertinent to my situation. Regarding the statute of limitations on architecture review, the most important part was the part that was discussed. In a nutshell, the Homeowners Association has one year to take action or file a lawsuit regarding architectural issues that are incorrect. Our door was installed more than five years ago. 
This was brought to the attention of the board by me. According to what I was told, the state law did not carry any weight if the covenant stated otherwise. I was informed that I needed to paint my door or else they would discuss the matter with their attorney. I informed them that I would not be painting my door and that, according to the law, they could not do anything to my door without facing criminal charges. I also informed them that I would not be painting my door. Nothing transpired despite the fact that attorneys spent a great deal of time exchanging letters with one another. When it came time for the annual meeting, the entire board was removed from their positions and a new board was elected to take their place. In the end, I became president. If you want to watch the part 5, click the link here. We're very, very glad to see you all in the comments again. Many, many thanks for your support.